he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteousness servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life into, unto death, and was numbered with the transgressions. For he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Merciful and everlasting God, you did not spare your only son, but delivered him up for us all to bear our sins on the cross. Grant that our hearts may be so fixed with steadfast faith in him that we fear not the power of sin, death, and death. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. The epistle from Hebrews, chapters 4 and 5. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith that we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet, but we have one who has been tempted in every, sorry, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yes, without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive the mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petition with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you willed that your son should bear for us the pains of the cross. And so remove them from us, the power of the adversary. Help us so to remember and give thanks for our Lord's passion that we may receive forgiveness of sins and redemption from everlasting death through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
O Lord our God, Father of the crucified, the comfort of the sorrowful, the strength of sufferers. We give you thanks for him who came forth from you, a light unto our darkness, who in divine love carried upon his own soul our sins and woes through the thick shadows and went down the ways of death so that no soul of all your children should cry in vain for the light of your face. In his name, therefore, we pray. For all who are tyrannized, ill-treated, and slain for Christ's sake, let no trial shake their faith or embitter their hearts, but keep them faithful and true. Lord, in your mercy. For all who are wronged, oppressed, abused, defrauded, or betrayed. Defend them, protect them, and deliver them from despair. Lord, in your mercy. For all who are downcast by fruitless toils or shattered hopes, who hurt and bruised in spirit serve without thanks and toil without recompense, preserve them by your Holy Spirit from utter grief of heart. Lord, in your mercy. For all who are friendless and homeless, the refugees, the wanderers, and the prisoners, provide for them, O Lord, and have pity on every child of misery. Lord, in your mercy. For all who are left behind and forgotten, all who are alone and afraid, the defeated, the timid, the brokenhearted, Befriend, comfort, and abide with them. Lord, in your mercy. For all who are tempted to destroy themselves, the enslaved, the despairing, the victims of drink and drugs whose feet are caught in a net, and all who are reaping the evil they have sown, let the power of Christ break off their fetters and set them free. Lord, in your mercy. For all who desire to do your will, yet falter continually. All who with doubtful feet stumble on in search of love. Those who, struggling after purity, are, are vexed with evil imaginations and inclinations. All who desire to follow you, but fear your cross. Give strength to them that have no might, and give them victory. Lord, in your mercy. For all who are troubled in spirit, all who are in dire straits and bound in miseries, the depressed, the anxious, those besieged by mental illness, loose the burdens, break their yokes, and let them know your peace. Lord, in your mercy. For all who are sick, fevered, and worn by disease or stricken by accident, all who are deprived of sight, speech, or hearing, and all the helpless, relieve their suffering, expel their maladies, relieve their spirit, revive their spirits, heal their wounds, and make them whole. Lord, in your mercy. For all the elderly and those to whom death is drawing near, Sustain them in unclouded faith and perfect peace, Lord, in your mercy. For all the dying, let your perpetual light shine upon them that they may fall asleep in peace and awake in the light of your face, Lord, in your mercy. For all who mourn, for those bereft of those in whom their souls delighted, Saddened with memories of vanished faces and loved voices stilled. Give them comfort in hope of that day when heart shall find heart and those sundered on earth shall foregather in the new creation. Lord, in your mercy. Revive, relieve, and comfort them all, O God, and make us too to rejoice in every experience, however hard, bitter, or costly, by which we are schooled in humble faith and in charity with one another. 
through the power and mercy of Jesus Christ, our Savior and good physician, in whose name we pray. Amen. Call on me in the day of trouble. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Not, not, yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. O Lord, have mercy on us. O Lord, deal not with us after our sins. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side there was a garden, and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the garden, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, what is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said, and Judas the traitor was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they said. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thank you.
O Lord, enter not into judgment with your servants. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also are with Jesus of Galilee, she said, but he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway, where another girl saw him, and said to the people there, This fellow was with the Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath, I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them, for your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses on himself, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people came to the decision to put Jesus to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the 30 silver coins to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us, they replied. That's your responsibility. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went away and hanged himself. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the holy Sahindrim reached a decision. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you, t- are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. The chief priest accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of? But Jesus still made no reply and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the feast to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do what, we, do what you want me to release you to the king of the Jews, asked Pilate. Knowing it was out of envy that the chief priest had handed Jesus over to him, But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. 
What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked. Crucify him, they shouted. Why, what crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they still shouted all the louder, crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Help us, O God of our salvation, to proclaim the glory of your name. Deliver us and purge away our sins from your name's sake. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. 
And then they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and they took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. And then they led him away to crucify him. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. God forbid that I should glory, as they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross, if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks, Pete. Humbly we adore you, O Christ, and we proclaim your saving love. Christ, 
It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness the sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. O Lord, have mercy on us. You will not abandon me to the grave. It was preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in the linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. O Lord, have mercy on us.
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the power.